this is uh all right, so you've got a super severe concussion. That leaves Skip <laughs> to himself in your now handicap match, and the Bastions oh. get the win. But in the post match, post match, Lance Hoyt arrives after Kip talked about how he wasn't in the building for the save. Why did a lot of TNA stuff make no sense this <laughs> time? <laughs> that, has that question been asked already once on this podcast? Uh, might might be doing it a third time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I, I again, I think there was. There was not creative singular focus. And I could be wrong. I could totally be wrong about that. No, this is the time such and such. But in my mind, I don't remember being there <laughs> in, in, in real time. So I'm looking back now and thinking, to your point, there's a lot of inconsistencies creatively here. And, uh, and so there, there, it had to have been uh, an interim creative director or, or I don't know. It just feels like that to me because it is disconjoined. Is it for the Bashams to get some heat going? Yeah, Maybe. yeah, of course, to come in and, and and look, to beat one guy and beat him and then claim victory over that, that's cheap. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a heel thing to do. That's a heel move. So, yeah, it definitely will get them heat. And they put me through the table and gave me the CCS or the SSC. Excuse me. CCS is <laughs> invert. When you, when you invert them into that, it's got to be your bull. And so... <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah they they were this was all to establish them as a team as a dominant team right. too and they're going to use the old dx rejects to, to do it you know what i mean and that makes perfect sense to me especially from someone who's utilized and brought back uh you know uh veteran talent to do just that to, right. to literally bring talent back and go we want you to put younger guys over because you're good and you're old. So we, <laughs> so we want you to help us out here. Uh, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's, you know, that's a bit, that's old business there. As we run through 2007 for BG James's career, we're at now at the end of September, oh. you and Kip go in the ring and cut this rooserific promo. Rooserific. As... <laughs> I love it. You're now heels and quote, this interview was a shoot. Oh, say. it was shoot. BG I don't know said the, yeah, BG said the other tag teams on the roster think doing flips is wrestling. And BG said they're so small he takes bigger dumps than the wrestlers there. <laughs> <laughs> you called the fans smart marks and said half the people in the office are as well. You didn't build up any kind of match, feud, nothing. You just ripped a promo. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes yeah. that's what you got to do. Look, it was in my, in, in creatives defense. And I hope this is true because I pray it is. It was just an idea that, Hey, let's get them out there and, and make sure their heels. You know what I mean? Let's make week. sure. Yeah. Let's make sure people do not like them. Um, so go out there and cut a heel promo. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what was going on uh, then for in day to day, but I, I could imagine that being just an establishing promo where it's, it's not meant to, it's not meant to tell a story about one team. It's meant to tell a story about one team going after all the teams. You know what I mean? Do you remember but this of course, being all Russo <laughs> or, or, or did you have I, any I, shoot feelings at the time? Oh, I, look, I'm, it, he did not write it, if that's what okay. we're talking about here. He he wrote one promo for me in my whole life, and um, I balled it up and threw it back at him. And and that was a that happened once, and and literally it made our relationship better. Um, and to this day we have a great one. But so yeah, I know for a fact he didn't script it. I know we probably talked about what you know what I mean, like hey, and I told him I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm sure we went over it about what the what the content was, just not verbatim, you know. All right. At this time, finally, Impact moves to two hours. How badly did TNA need this at this time? Were, were you guys excited about it? Yeah, yeah, I think everybody was. And and the reason being is, we talked about it earlier. It's an hour show, man. And and to get people over, you have to have those people on the show uh, every week, if not every other, at least, you know? And so two hours, it just gives you double the exposure. You have all these, I mean, we talked about the people they had at this point, the Lance Ar Archers of the world, the, the uh, Steiners, the Dudleys, the Bashams, the, you know, Raven and his flock. And so they have a ton of talent and not enough time to, to utilize them all. And I think, uh, going to two hours was going to give them at least twice the time to do that. Now, whether it would be consistent or make sense uh, is yet to be determined. Um, but 
it will give them double the time for uh, talent distribution, for lack of a better term. 